December 17, 2019, uh, Residential Housing Committee of the Douglas County Board of Commissioners to order. Uh, we're going to go around the room. So that being said, um, for the sake of the public record, we're going to go around the room and introduce ourselves. My name is Kelly Robinson. I am the Vice Chairman of the Board of Commissioners and also the Chair of this committee. Uh, Mark Teal, County Administrator. Johanna Walnut, Clerk of the Planning and Zoning Board. Don Roberts, Planning and Zoning Manager. James Worthington, Development Services Director. Brian Keel, Engineering Manager for the Water and Sewer Authority. Travis McDonald, Assistant County Engineer. Gil Strauss, Executive Director of the Water and Sewer Authority. Very good. Uh, we do expect M Chair to come um, later and we'll see her at that time. All right. Um, director. Okay. Um, I guess first thing we'll start with approval of the minutes. I know Johanna had sent those out, but everybody yes, get those and get a chance to see those. We'll go ahead and vote on that. Okay. And I get a motion to uh, adopt and approve the meeting minutes as presented. So sure, moved. Second. And a motion to second in discussion. One in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. All right. We just keep going. Uh, next thing on the list is update of our pipe farm incentive, if you will. Brian? Sure. Like that. So very happy to say we have completed um, all of the projects at this point except for one, the uh, Polk Place project. That's the one we're on hold waiting for the owner to provide um, some assurance that they are in fact moving forward with the project that they've obtained necessary sewer reasons. Where is that located exactly? That's off Highway 78 west of downtown. It's adjacent to the large tract owned by uh, Mr. Johnny Blankenship. Okay. Okay. Um, work is complete in all of the other subdivisions. Uh, we have, I believe development is underway in Beulah Ridge, Palmer Falls, soon to be underway in Winchester Farms and construction has also started in Legacy Park. Um, so we are seeing movement on, on several of these. Okay. Um, speaking of Legacy Park, so um, it, I heard that there might have been some issues there. Have, it sounds like we've got them resolved. Is that true? Have you, you know anything? I think it was, there's sewer, and there's stormwater, and then there's sewer. Yes, sir. Can you? There were uh, sewer issues that were related to stormwater issues that were going on for quite some time. They had a portion of the sewer line that was flooded. It was underwater due to an issue with their stormwater bond. They did resolve that. That's been a month or two back now. They've gotten that resolved. And um, so they we've issued permits and approved construction plans. And um, they've been underway for a couple weeks now. Very good. Yeah, that's good. So to this point, can, um, and again, I'm open to Howard at this answer. It was what, 454 units total estimate? That's, yeah, that's right. Somewhere around 400. 389 was my latest memory, but I wouldn't necessarily go on my memory. <laughs> I was in your uh, development conference room. Oh, well, I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. Well, I, I assumed you may have got hung up with uh, security, <laughs> too. Yes. All right, let's finish the conversation. So, all right, so here we are, uh, 389 units. Um, when do you think the deal will be done? Um, it, it, it just, for the most part, the deal these out, they will go 2021? Uh, yeah, just ask. My best guess would be that those that are underway, the Beulah Ridge, Palmer Falls, and um, Winchester Farms, and um, Legacy Park, I would expect within the next two years, yes, those will probably be primarily built out. Uh, from our conversations with the owners of the others, um, Covered Bridge, Groovers Lake, Holly Springs, and Grove Park, we've had no indication from them that they're ready to start development. They don't have any definitive plans, so uh, we're really not sure as to the timing on those. And, and again, I, I just, just, just for the public record, I do appreciate working with you guys over at WSA as well as James, you guys making this happen. It's something that the citizens brought out specifically are we would call our small builders who <coughs> felt as though that they pretty much were getting locked out. They, they weren't eating like they once did in times past. Uh, we, we, there was a meeting that we had, um, I think at the Development Authority, um, they, they hosted, and we had a round the table discussion about, okay, now we have no, we, the Board of Commissioners, um, 
had no control over the economy and what happened. They had no control over perhaps why um, those small um, donors uh, can get wholesale lines and funding or opportunities, right? So, you know, we as board commissioners leadership, we understand what we're looking at. But at the same point, it's like, okay, but everybody gets to eat. So let's, let's be creative. Like, um, so we agreed, um, and again, at this time, Commissioner Mulcair was here. I mean, we thought it was, it was prudent to say, okay, look, let's, 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 let's incentive. Let's create an incentive that will stimulate um, getting rid of what I call, uh, what I want to call uh, um, neighborhood blight, right? You had these pipe farms, they were, going to eventually grow with things gonna grow up around them and stuff. And these 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 relatively nice communities. And the citizens it was just sort of sitting there, but the citizens are focused with their lives. I remember I had this at a town hall, we brought it up and we asked, and they, they saw the rationale behind them words, we're gonna use real tax dollars, your tax dollars, and we're gonna incent to get rid of this blight, to at least stimulate, it, right? Because I, I think the county administrator knows at that time, um, um, as far as growth we were concerned, like I think we came in with about we said to, we came in at 157, and it was like, okay, what's trying to digest now? Everybody else is building, you know, sort of like dead cattle line. Like, everybody up north had already built out their pipelines and moved off to new, cut down new trees. I know we were last in, last out. I know we got hit the hardest. We all understood that. But it was just one of those where maybe this will help stimulate. So I guess that's going to lead into our further conversation about, one, I, I think the board is active in, in our, our desire to do what's right. And again, um, the terms you guys worked out with us, uh, we, we really appreciate that. But but, but once this is done, I guess, uh, what, is that it on the update? Uh, uh, yes, sir. You okay with that? I'm good. Yes, sir. I, I just want to swing, and I know we have a guest. We want to... Yes, we're, we're going to get to that. So, Let's yeah, decide. All right, so, all right, so we'll keep going. So, next. Okay, uh, next is new discussion items, and we're actually going to start, because this will kind of segue in, into yep. more conversation. but. Uh, Unified Development Code update. I'm going to let Ron touch on this okay? because uh, this is kind of part of our original conversations from years ago and all of this ties together. So take it away, Ron. All right, thank you. Uh, so yes, we uh, got the uh, CDAP grant last year. Um, we sent the match to ARC. We started in earnest with these meetings with ARC staff and Sizemore Group, which is a a zoning consultant that ARC uh, contracts with. Um, what we've done is we've, we've had uh, uh, two, uh, three meetings actually going through the, the, the UDC. Uh, then we developed um, a stakeholder list. Um, the stakeholder list is the planning and zoning board members, board of commissioners, uh, various staff to include uh, Brian Keel here, who's already participated in some of the CDAP meetings, uh, going over our code and just how it applies. Uh, um, then we also had some representation from the city of Douglasville, and then we also had some public um, members to include Mr. Leslie Chu, who has now joined us. And so what happened is Monday, <coughs> the questionnaire, survey questions, went out to this group of individuals to uh, start beginning to get to solicit some feedback from, from them that haven't been directly involved in the process thus far. And um, we, we will be doing, be taking um, these to the Planning and Zoning Board, probably in a special call meeting, working through them and, and on the drafts, getting their input and then bringing it to the Board of Commissioners um, uh, over the next uh, several months. So we're looking at uh, probably a May, April, June time frame for, for, for us to be bringing forward uh, some changes for the Unified Development Code. Um, and I'll accept any questions. Yeah, yeah. no, that's fine. How would, how you, maybe both you and kind of help, and Rick, how would we work for this? Because you talk about a major UDC overhaul, right? Unfortunately, it won't be as, 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 as a major overhaul, but we want to clean it up. There's some indiscrepancies there. There's some things that we wanted to look at. There's some categories that didn't exist in 2004 that exist now in, in this world that we want to add um, and cover and, and have uh, zoning classifications for. Um, uh, we, 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 we've had on, on the agenda at one of the prior planning and zoning meetings um, uh, short-term rentals. Uh, we've had um, truck parking. We've had um, uh, the, the, the box pickups that Amazon now employs. Uh, we've had some of those items come forward, but we, we, we just hadn't had time to really address them. Um, so now we're having 
with through this opportunity, we're able to get uh, a, a water, uh, a wider um, uh, degree of, of, of input from the Sizemore Group, which is, which is the consulting firm that we that ARC is contracted with to help us to shape these uh, these codes a little bit better. Okay. And, and, all right, and, I, and I appreciate that, and I, and I guess mm -hmm. that it's still major from the degree of thinking about you know, Commission Mitchell was saying, mm -hmm. the process of which, how, do you, how will you guys approach, are you going to present this to the Board of Commissioners? Well, that, that's a right, right? So you're going to, it doesn't matter what you looked at, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that, that's yes. the point. So whatever that bucket is, mm -hmm. to walk us through the Board of Commissioners, I mean, you're going to have to spread this out, right? So yes, it's like Congress, are. like Absolutely. the Bill so what are we going to take up and not take up? We can't be, okay, we'll sit there at 4 o'clock in the morning, or we're going to try to push through this, or we're going to rush. No, sir. Because the whole premise is, the whole premise is to, to, to get, while you've got input from everybody else, mm -hmm. as well as the Sizemore group, it's important that we have a chance to process what you're saying, what you're presenting, because again, it's going to be thoughtful. It's like, because it's not just a snap, change this, we got a typo here, we did this. We actually want to give respect and honor to the process and everything you've done, but I'm just going to encourage you to like, okay, lay out how y'all going to take it to the Board of Commission now. Y'all going to have a separate meeting? Um, talk that's, about that. well, how, how are y'all going to approach that? Yeah, that's that's what we've, we've talked about doing, Commissioner, to be honest with you. But we don't want to have the, our process requires that the planning zoning board approve any UDC changes and the Board of Commissioners would approve it. Our current format is planning zoning BOC. So I don't think we won't, either one of us wants to sit there before our planning zoning meeting and then tackle some of these large changes. So we figure what we'll do is would be to take them in draft form, educate the planning and zoning board. That way they can help communicate back and also help bring it forward with ARC Sizemore Group to to the uh, Board of Commissioners. So we would have some drafts that will come forward, planning and zoning, weigh in, flex, vet, flesh those changes out and then bring them you know, forward, and then in the next iteration, do the same thing, so that it's kind of a, a longer process. It's going to take some time um, to get these people together and get this information together and, and and work through the the educational components to educate everyone about what we're seeing, what we're what we're drafting, what what the intent is, why we're doing it, where we're going with it, and also it's a little preliminary, but we want to get the understanding of the political will of, of, of the direction we can adjust some sizes for the for the residential housing we can we can add some some different uh, zoning classifications much like the city of Douglasville did um, we can have we can we can have those discussions we were having them but we're, we we need to vet them and push them through the stakeholder group and go through the formal process before we can actually act on them and so we, and please don't compromise. Uh, obviously, reinforce your process. Mm -hmm. Be true to it. I'm just saying, at some point, you come before the board of commissioners, where if it's just to prove what you guys have already done, no problem. Mm -hmm. But they're going to have questions. They're going to have some thoughts. And it's, it's, so, at what point? I know we have representatives on the planning and zoning, um, and maybe they're interacting with us along the way, sort of like a community does. You we know, would like here. that. Um, to sort of get ahead, get our input ahead of time, so while it comes out on the other side, we've already we've already weighed in. Uh, I'm just we want to be thoughtful for this. I mean, you know, usually our board commissioners is yes, 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 yes. Ninety percent is it's yes, yes, yes. We don't. If you look at some of the other major jurisdictions, they do real legislation. We don't. We don't really do legislation. We may pass a resolution every now and then. Um, it, it's handled very, very differently, right? Mm -hmm. Obviously, we've got one of the Dr. Day deal with. Um, yeah, uh, the solicitors bringing some forth, but we don't handle major legislation. We just don't. Our, our, our culture here is such that it was it, it, it just it didn't develop that way, which is okay. And that's that's what the board is to choose what they want to tackle from the ordinance. But this here gives a chance to like, okay, guys, this is real. We need to think about the way of life. How our our citizens, what, what would they like us to render a, a decision on, or, or shape their their future? And, but whether it comes to land use or development code and all that, we we, we want to be thoughtful. So I, I just give the board of commissioners time to hear what you have to say and give them time to participate. That's all I can refer. How about that? That sounds great. So along that same line, um, <coughs> in historical terms, this is a, a new committee. I mean, I know it's a year old now, but year um, so a relatively new committee. We've not experienced a change like this with this committee. Do we want to bring those changes 
through this committee and make a recommendation to the BOC. Would well, be a recommendation to the P and the and the BOC. That's what I was going to say. Is it, which do we want to time it? Do recommendations here first, and then present it to Planning Zone Board, P and Z, and then the BOC. The P and Z committee, then the BOC, or have the Planning Zone Board members invite them to attend this meeting, or you could have a joint workshop, which we've done in the past, mm -hmm. with board commissioners and Planning Zone, like we've done a couple of times. Mm -hmm. yeah to go over the yeah, yeah. future land use plan, you know, hot topics, things of that thing, so that way we can all discuss them at the same time. Yeah. I'm, I'm open. Um, just give, give time for the process to work, right? Because you guys are putting a lot of effort. We're paying for this. We're, we're using consultants, and um, I, I just want to get it right. It's not very often we do this. So I'm open to it. Okay. I'm open to it. You, you can use this as a vehicle. Mark, y'all work it out. I'm okay. fine. Okay. okay. You okay, Ron? Absolutely. I'm good on that. All right, let's keep going. All right, next discussion item is a open discussion with local builder representative. Oh boy, and member of Home Builder Association, Leslie Chu. Welcome back, Mr. Leslie. Chu. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> welcome. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. And you're being you know, this is yeah. Being well, good. somebody pointed that out, okay. so <laughs> now I have to uh, learn to watch what I say. Uh, now, is this going to be a question answer so, type thing, or do you want me to say something? Or? Uh, it, this is a discussion um, mainly to, well, as I mentioned before, this committee at current stage, we're more or less fact finding. We're trying to get some direction, some ideas, things that the government could do, entities could do to improve things for uh, builders, uh, developments encourage building spur you know incentivized development like you mentioned before um, and I know you've been involved in several of the meetings in the past um, so I guess we can kind of touch on some of the things that we we've said in the past and see if anything else is you know as new things came as I don't know it's probably been a year or more been since we did the one at the yeah. development authority you know has anything changed anything else came to light that you can say hey you, you know the a lot of the home builders are saying this is a problem and that's something we could approach like we did the pipe farm issue and, and kind of work through it. So yeah. let, let me let me add to that and let's see, right now, I mean this is open and we just want you to opine. This community was designed to sort of get input from the community, builders, builders, you know, related developers. Um, you guys is opinion matters, right? This is the one community that we unlike transportation which we do control. Um, or some of the other things. Housing, we really don't. We're at the, obviously we work in conjunction with you guys. So uh, we, we, we use this as a platform to really hear from you guys. So this is an open, and I just want to hear you opine. This, what are you saying? What, what's out there right now going into basically our 150th birthday next year? We're, we're at the turn in essence. Um, you're going into 2020. Uh, I've been here uh, 30 years since 1990, right? The, the lack of a mortgage, right? So my, my entire adult life, has been right here in Douglas, and I was coming up the street just now uh, with my mother, and we were passing by Lee Road, and I looked at that, like, man, I'm in that public school. There was nothing there. There was nothing but some farmland. And so there's been this evolution. So here we are, you know, we went through a recession, we're trying to recover, we're trying to get rid of the pipe arms and the remnants of the old. So how, did, how does the outlook look now? And it's just your old mind. You know, that's okay. what it should be. Fair enough. So when we did meet the last time, let's call it, a year plus, uh, there was a lot of discussion, and, and kudos, kudos goes out to the county, the WSA, everybody who made those things happen that resolved the issue with the pipe farms, that resolved the issue with better communication between the entities. Um, from my perspective, um, working not only in Douglas County but other communities since 1985, um, we are in the best place we've ever been in the building world in Douglas County as well as Douglasville. And I think a lot of that has to do with um, everybody's not on their own separate island anymore. There's actually uh, communication amongst everybody. Uh, can it get better? Absolutely. Um, I would say all of us could communicate 
better even with our family members if, if we were honest. But kudos goes out because it is a lot better. The question has been asked to me for years and years and years, why do you live in Douglas County? You can live anywhere you want to. And my answer to that is um, I'm rooted in this community. I live here, I work here, I go to church here, I trade with the local Ace Hardware, I know people, and that's a comfort level for me. Um, there are a lot of people that I know that are leaving this community for whatever reason. And uh, I'm not going to leave because I, I want to stay and I want to make it a better place. So how does that relate to what we do and what we see? Now, I, my voice, my opinion reflects the small home builder. Um, the guys who are doing probably 25 to 30 houses or less a year. Unfortunately, the larger builders, the national builders, really don't participate in our local association. So we occasionally hear from them when they want something, but otherwise we don't hear at all from them. Um, so I can't really tell you if another national builder is looking to come into Douglas County, but what I can speak is from the perspective of somebody, and I consider myself a small builder. Um, what we look at, as like in any community, is how, how difficult is it to do business in a community. From, from, uh, from the development standpoint, uh, the process, you know, are we told something initially and it changes as we go through it? Um, and everything uh, has gotten better. Um, with, with the exception, and again, I hear a lot, I'm kind of like a sponge at meetings because people talk to me, is for some reason, most people, whether they're developers or builders or doing projects, are having issues with the local DOT here. And the issue is, they're being told something when they initially come in and even have it in writing. They go through the process and when it comes up to the end, like, whoa, 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 you gotta do, do this, this, and this, and this to be in compliance. Well, whoa, that's not what you told us. Well, it doesn't matter. If you don't do this, we're not gonna do it. In all fairness, that's not fair to anybody. Sure. And I don't know how that gets fixed, but it is still an issue, and it has uh, prevented what I would consider uh, businesses that would improve this community, because it's a facelift to the community, um, for the people to just say, you know what, I'm not going to do that. I, I feel like I'm being extorted. I'm being asked to pump another million and a half dollars in this project to make improvements that I didn't sign up to begin with, and I'm just not going to do it. So they don't do it. Um, but other than that, I don't really have anything, um, um, and negative is not the right word, just I don't have any other comments other than positive things. Um, the, the, the building at my level, pulling permits runs it smooth. Um, I would love if we could at one point in time get to the point where, um, and I'll use Coweta County because I'm building a house down there. Um, they email us as soon as the inspection is done. They let us know if it's passed. They let us know if it's, it hasn't passed. They actually list all the deficiencies. Um, and then not knowing, being familiar with Douglas County, I called them uh, because they are very strict, I will tell you that, which is not bad. But I told them I've been building since 1985. I've never built in Coweta, so I don't <coughs> come in here acting like I know everything. Uh, and there's a couple things they do different. So when I got turned down on my initial inspection, and by the way, there, the builder calls for all the inspections, calls for all the mechanicals, everything. Because ultimately, the builder is accountable <coughs> to make sure that everything gets corrected which I, at first I didn't like, but now I understand their mentality. Uh, I said, now, what do I need to do to get a reinspection? They said, well, just give us a credit card number, and uh, we'll run your credit card number over the phone, and you don't have to come in. It's my understanding here currently, you still have to come in and write a check or mail it, i.e. snail mail. 
Well, that's not real practical because I can tell you that a lot of subcontractors don't necessarily live in Douglas County. They're, they're spread out and they work in various places. So I know that is probably uh, related to some kind of computer upgrade or having the, the, the software to do that, but it does make it convenient. Um, and because I'm understanding that Douglas County and the city of Douglasville are trying to attract quality developments, which starts with quality developers, quality builders, and then having codes and regulations that ensures a quality job. Um, we, we want to kind of eliminate any impediment, anything that would say, well, why do they have to do it that way? Why can't we make it easier? Um, everybody who does what I do, if they're not busy right now, they're not good at what they do. Um, so when times are good, you're not going to hear a whole lot of complaining from us as an association or us as individuals. When times are bad, um, then we have a tendency to gripe and how, you know, how can we make things better because obviously they're bad because of you. It couldn't be anything that I'm doing. Right? Um, but uh, so it's good and, and, and I honestly can say I think as I alluded to earlier, um, the perception now is not, this was the perception years ago. Come to Douglas County, you can buy a lot land and lots relatively cheap and you can build a house relatively cheap and I didn't like that I was part of the problem and I didn't like it um, today um, if we could do anything you can't mandate and regulate quality by size of home you cannot put a square footage on there saying, oh, if we make it an 1,800 or 2,200 square foot minimum, we're going to get quality. I can take you into numerous houses that are 3,000 square feet that are not quality, but they meet the square footage. Put strict control regulations. We're all getting older, at least I am. My clients today have had the big house, don't want it would love to live in a 2,000 square foot and spend 600,000 building it because they want a quality, quality product. But they don't want to clean these or hire somebody to clean a house that nobody uses. Mm -hmm. So I would love to see the quality. Now, this isn't the perspective of every builder, but this is the perspective from me. So this community does become a better place that we do attract better restaurants, better shopping, better everything else, is let's break that we're a, we're a cheap place to build a house. Let's raise the bar and put standards on what we expect builders to do. Now, I also wear a nonprofit hat. I'm the community house builder leader for Habitat for Humanity, and I happen to sit on the board of directors. Um, when I wear that hat, I do want to build a quality house, but I do understand we can't do that at the price we're doing at if we have to build 1,800 square foot houses. Currently the city has made an exception and is allowing us to build houses on 10,000 square foot lots at 1,500 to 1,550 square feet. For those, and I know the commission chair has been over there, those are quality houses. Um, they meet Earthcraft, they're tight, uh, and, and I'm, I'm proud that everybody who's worked on it, they'll say, oh, I thought this was going to be a cheaply built house. Well, it isn't. Um, so it can be done. Yes, it does cost a little bit more. Yes, you may not get the developer who wants to come in and put up 500 houses in a year and, 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 and get out, in and out. But you can build quality homes at any square footage. Uh, and, and I know we can do that because we do it at Habitat. Um, so the last thing I'd like to say is Douglas County is very diverse, including the city and the county. When you're talking about a unified development code, it would be a huge mistake to take this sheet of paper and say, here's the western portion, north, whatever, and apply that. 
I think we're too diverse. We have niches in this community, almost like if we were doing a tax allocation district. Let's work with the areas that we need to give a, a facelift to, that we really need to improve, and treat them differently than an area that we don't need to do that. Meaning you can't, in my opinion, you can uh, apply the same rules, regulations, and standards demographically and uh, to a county and just break it up like half and half or whatever. I think you need to have little niche areas that if you do this here, Mr. Developer, we'll incentivize it by allowing you to do this. Whereas if you do it over here, there really might not be any incentives, but you do have to meet these particular uh, code regulations. Um, the field trip we took to Rock Hill, Rock Hill South, Carolina. South Carolina, they did that. And they realized that we need to do something to spur the economy here. And I think with everything that's going on, we are at that point, both in the city and the county here, that we do need to do something, but let's make sure we do it right because 10 years from now, we'll, be, we'll tell the truth whether we did it right. And I can honestly say everything that we saw in Rock Hill, they have done right. So we don't have to reinvent the wheel. Right. Ron, you were with us too. Right. Uh, now, yes, things are a little different there, but there's no reason that concept, that philosophy cannot work. And it starts here with the Board of Commissioners and then it just goes <coughs> down. Uh, Commissioner Robinson, mentioned culture. We can create a new culture in Douglas County. Instead of just talking about it, we can do it. And then I think everybody will get on the same page. But I appreciate the fact that I can still work in Douglas County and, and uh, it's very easy. Um, I, I, I don't mean, I don't say that. When, when the permit process and everything, uh, it's not quite as complicated as the city of Atlanta, but I hope we never get to that point <laughs> when it takes uh, six weeks to pull a permit. Yeah. Uh, if anybody has any questions, I can hopefully answer. I hope I didn't uh, throw anybody who's with the DOT under the bus here, but you asked me and, and I shared that with you. Well, yeah. No, I, and again, thank you, thank you, Mr. Um, Chu, for your, your comments. I mean, again, we asked you to opine, and that's why um, it, your, your voice matters. Um, you're, you're, I've always had a respect for you and always have looked to you to sort of like, okay, but your, your wisdom, it matters. We need this type of input. Like, no, listen, tell us the truth. Tell us what you see. Not rarely do we get people who don't have, have a, a motive. Everybody want to get in your ear, especially as an elected. Everybody want to talk to you. Everybody want to meet with you. Everybody want to get your... But what I appreciate about you is that you're, you're being honest because to your point, you're rooted. Right? So you, your motive is somewhat like I'm looking out for the best interest of the whole, not just some, some type of secondary. So I, I appreciate that, but I did want to talk about one thing that you mentioned. Again, I, I won't get into the DOT, but it sounds like what, what I'm hearing from a builder perspective, and mm -hmm. I've heard this, but I want you to confirm is that whether you're a commercial builder or developer or a residential, is it, is it about uniformity? A process that when you come in you want to have a, 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 a consistent experience that, that's my first question the second one is that when it comes to development standards and this is something that we talked to our state legislation earlier this year about about um, um, you know, brand new communities and um, the, the developer not the builder but the developer and it's their relationship to the, the new homeowners and all those covenants and stuff and I don't want to but, but it's somewhat related it's about the experience here Right, so when you come here to do business, or when you come to, come here to live here, there's something about consistency, uniformity. Don't tell me this and you do that. That happens for the people who live here or the people who work here. Can you give me some insight? Give us some insight on that. Just your thoughts. About um, uniformity and consistency in, in that context. So over the years, I've worked in Douglas, Cobb, City of Atlanta, Fulton, Carroll. Pauling, mm -hmm. and um, kind of a kind of a, a an area that is relatively within 35 to 40 minutes of here, and I guess it's human nature that we start comparing. Well, it's easier to do business here, and it's not so easy to do it here. Um, 
But what, once you learn the system, the system should stay the same. Meaning that once I've gone through the process of pulling several permits, whether it's uh, on the development side or building permit side, um, you understand what the county or city is expecting of you and, and they know what to expect of us. Um, when things change, and well, wait a minute, the last four times I pulled a permit, this was okay, but it's not okay today. And by the way, nobody even notified us until I'm standing here in front of you. Uh, that is where people get heartburn. And I think everybody uh, in this room would agree whether you're pulling permits or whether whatever experience. So consistency, uh, and that's hard sometimes in, 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 a, in a department that is sometimes politically driven. If next month we had all brand new commissioners, within six months there would probably be all brand new department heads. Those department heads may not agree with the previous department heads. So things do change and we understand that. But if there's a system put in place that it ensures both developers, and the developers are the ones that you really need to reach out to because they're the ones making the big investments in these communities. The builders make an investment, but not at the degree that the developers do. Um, they want to know that from the time I develop this to the time I sell out, I'm playing under the same rules. Things aren't changing on me. I'm not having to go back and add an amenity package because somebody thought we needed an amenity package. Uh, I'm not having to come and do things. I'm not having to come and cut a desal uh, lane on, on Fairburn Road because <coughs> you know the community says we have too much traffic. And by George, that developer is doing real well, make him do it. So, I, yeah, right, wrong, or indifferent, those are the kind <coughs> of things that developers and if, and ultimately it affects builders because the builder pays the developer his cost what he has so he can make a profit he can pay his people and at the end of the day make a profit so consistency is probably from from the county uh, at all levels is what uh, uh, the bigger developers are looking at um, and again, unfortunately, I'm not in tune with those people. And I don't, I don't, I don't know if, if the big guys even, they have representatives that come in here and pull permits, but I, I don't know if you're ever talking in the horse's mouth. No, uh, on the developer side, we, I'd say new development, we've not had new residential development. We've had some extension of old phases and some rebirths of some old projects and things, but our new development has more or less been all <coughs> industrial and commercial lately um, in the last few years, since the recession. Um, so I would say at this point, the contacts I had that were developers are no longer valid. Y'all agree with that? Um, I don't even have a contact to reach out to as far as a residential developer that would you know we used to have a lot of local guys that were pretty big you know, yeah um, BBC and a bunch of them that did a lot of stuff um, but that's kind of passed so on the industrial side at least to me they seem to be moving great like no complaints it's just boom, 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 go. Um, and we haven't really had that rebirth of the residential side. Um, I actually had a conversation with uh, Eugene at Metro Study, you know, Eugene. I had a conversation with him um, with intent to invite him to a future meeting. And so his predictions, if you will, um, seem, he, he seems poised to think that we'll see that rebirth this year. Like in, in the next 12 months, we'll see a, a boom again in residential. Um, I hope he's right. He was the one that kind of predicted, it's the same guy that we went to the meeting at that he said it was gonna bust when everything was going yeah. great. And I was like, it's it's look crazy. everything in order. 
because it's going down here. No, but don't, don't leave your, your thought to it. it unless you weigh in on it. So we, we recognize in our pipeline right now, but this we suggested that we got about what, a thousand homes that come online and they're like, um, you know, again, we've got um, and waking needs to be finished out. I'm just talking about in general, whether it's city or county, tributary has got to be built out. It's what we call, again, those, um, what we call a broken promise, right? Mm -hmm. So you probably got a couple thousand just, you know, just, just finish the original vision of the county, right? Let's just finish everything you guys started. Um, but let's just finish that. Mm -hmm. It's unfulfilled. So I, I think we still have some unfulfillment to get done before the new birth, which is, which is coming. But I want to get on to this. We did a housing study, uh, how long? Three years ago? Three, give, take Two three, or three, three, yeah, three years ago. And it identified that uh, in Douglas County, as far as I mean, this is where your expertise comes in, our price point that we were lacking is somewhere between the two to $400,000 home. Now that's all relative to, at that time, two to 400000 which which wasn't the first time home builder, I mean the first time home buyer, and it wasn't, I guess, necessarily we started getting that five and above. It's sort of that, I guess, that, what that we call a move up home, uh, what, or, you know, it's beyond the start of home. But how, how, and you talked about the different areas, the different uh, uh, characteristics of the county. Right. So, how do we, how do we, as opposed to sprawl, how do we intentionally incent our future? Right. So, how do you attract those builders, uh, those developers that will do this two to four that we know are lacking? In other words, there's nothing first, affordable housing, which, okay, you, I'm, I'm not talking about federal affordable housing, but still, there's the lower end, but the, all these people who, my son, I mean, I was a roommate when I came in 1990, lived in Weston Creek, South Carolina, right? That's the difference that was back then. So, we're trying to, we're looking for some insight that says, while we're listening to the, the forecast, it's going to be okay, but are we intentionally? Is there something we can do to sort of, like, help focus where, in this um, master plan area, I mean, we, we, what is it that, that that's needed? I mean, that's what we're here for, to try to hear, so that if, if Madam Chair looks to me to make us feel like, well, what do you think? I, I need something to say. What do you think? Well, I kind of make the analogy, I, I chair the uh, City of Douglasville Authority, um, Development Authority, and everything that comes before us, and, and, and occasionally I'll go to the county meetings, the, the large companies, and we won't mention any names, who decide to locate, and it, unfortunately it's just the way of doing business now. Yeah. If you're not willing to give some type of concession, they're not coming because they have other communities that are rolling out the red carpet for them and saying, come to us. They're not doing what we're doing. Um, that happens in the development world a lot. Rock Hill the cities and counties that we visited, they rolled out the red carpet. They worked, they got the utility companies, um, I don't know about the water department, I think they own the water department, mm -hmm. didn't they? Mm -hmm. uh, but everybody... I think they own power too. They own power, so it is easier. But it was a collaborative effort. Everybody said, we want to attract this type of developer, we want to see at the end of the day this type of product. Mm -hmm. Mr. Developer, what do you need for us to do? Instead of saying, Mr. Developer, you're going to do all these, and if you don't want to do it, get out of here. We're not interested. Maybe right. it's, and I don't have the answer, but maybe that, um, going about it from that yeah. perspective, may be uh, the same thing. Uh, now, you're going to have people who are going to gripe and, oh, you, you know, you give all the big people all these concessions. What about us little guys? Well, that's okay. I mean, it really is, because at the end of the day, 20 years from now, we reap the awards uh, of what the decisions we made today. Um, that hasn't been the way we do business in this community for a long time, but I think we all understand it. it's, it's different out here today. You have to do things a little bit differently. And, and being willing to look at approaches like that, I think um, it will be beneficial. Now, it takes collaboration, but um, I honestly believe, uh, and, and we're not personal friends, that today we have the best relationship between the city and county. And it, you know, at one time, well, if the county doesn't let us do it, we'll annex into the city. If the city doesn't let us do it, we'll, and at one time it was almost like a game. Yeah, <laughs> we'd love to have you, especially if you want to get out of city and vice versa. 
today I may be wrong, but I don't see a lot. Does that go on a lot anymore? It's definitely not like it used to be. It, it isn't like <laughs> it used to be. And, and some of us have been around a long time, so I'm speaking from the, the 80s on. Um, but to answer your question, I think, um, and the city's going to go through it with it on the, on the old jail side. You know, we're, they're looking currently for a developer to come in and really do a quality job. Um, if some of you remember when the Atkins Park area and some in, in that Smyrnakov County area first came about, everybody said, that isn't going to work here. And, and now it's a model for a lot of people. You go to little communities like Ackworth. We have friends that uh, were Cartersville last weekend for a... Um, a symphony and and what these areas have done to really improve and attract people who want to move into the community um, I think can be done here remember we have proximity to the airport the fact that we do have this many exits off of I-20 in Douglas County um, you know I, I think it's and I know we have been doing it but I think we can stand up and say we have a lot to offer and as the Commission Chair has said we are open for business and not to paraphrase but we, we're doing business differently today than we used to and um, I think we could be very successful if we incentivize or give developers a reason to come to this community instead of regulate, 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 regulate. Because at the end of the day, regulate, regulate, regulate costs money, money, money. And like the big companies who want to locate, uh, they put too much money into it, they'll never get a return on their investment. Okay. Well, I'd like to touch on a few things that you said now and in the past, maybe as an update for you, but the um, size requirements, lot requirements, um, trying to somehow incorporate quality rather than quantity. We are pushing that into the review that we're doing of the UDC and those changes should be kind of within six or eight months. Something That's that right. Nature. So I, I don't know what those will be yet. We're working with ARC, but you know, we'd let them know this is a, a big issue here. A lot of folks want to know, you know, can we do this, can we do this? So they're, they're looking into that with us. That's one of the things. Um, <coughs> credit card payments over the phone, that's something you mentioned. I, we've tried that before, and I'll look into it again. The last time we tried it, we had an issue with finance. And they, there was some backstory on security. I don't know. It wasn't just like stubbornness. They didn't want to do it. It was they had some reason they didn't want to do phone payments. But... I'm certainly open to the idea or You should whatever. be able to log on to the website and make the payments there, just like you do with on Bill and Ray or there. Yeah, you, you should be able some, to do that. Some website payments, but I don't know about just straight up over the phone. But I I mean we'll I'll look into that. That one falls under me, I'll definitely look into it and see if we can if we can do something. Um and I'll also look into email and inspection results because we do, they log in to build a radius and blueprints. They usually do it at the end of the day. Now that is something they're not equipped with the electronics in the field that they would need to do that immediately, but that would be something we could look into. Yeah, I'm going to pull up. Now keep in mind, Coweta County has privatized their inspection department. So the, the, the ladies in the office and a couple, two, three, four gentlemen who were there are still there, but the actual inspections are privatized. Yes. So they email us, and I'm trying to pull it up. I think it comes across as community core, <coughs> and I don't know if it's a third party involved in that, but I do know that the inspector has this huge laptop, and before he leaves that site, he's on it. And he probably is either doing it directly or sending that to somebody and then there. But it comes across very official with the seal and you know, this is what's happened. Um, so who's, do you know who's paying 
for the third party? Do you know, is it you as the builder paying extra for that or is it the local government covering that cost? Um, we as the builder. Now I'm going to say something that's not going to be real popular with my, um, <laughs> we don't charge enough in this community. If you expect to have these services, you got to pay for them. Yeah. And um, the permit fee that we're being charged in Douglas County is way, way below the average. Now you can edit this off this camera if I'm getting <laughs> televised. No, we can't. But, no, I'm but I, I mean, and everybody knows it. Yep. So for a, uh, hypothetically, for a 30, 2,900 square foot house, I paid $1,850 in Calgary County. I would probably pay 380 to 450 here. Um, so community core is how it comes across. Um, I'll let you see that. Yeah. And I can email that to you. But it makes it easy. And I know that I have called Sally, who's a gem in our world, because she does so much for us, and harassed her, hey, did I pass that inspection? I don't know how many of those calls she takes on a daily basis. But if there was a system like that that we all knew, once we get our inspection, it comes across, uh, we can immediately know, uh, hey, I can go ahead and schedule. Um, I passed the rough in framing, I can schedule the insulation. Uh, now, I, I'm primarily in Douglas County. It takes me 35 minutes to drive to Newton. I don't really want to drive there. Um, now I'm selfish, what I'm about to say, just to see if I pass the yeah. inspection. So I either call them, and they've made it simple. But I assure you, out of that $1,800, we're paying for this service, yes. which I don't think we mind. I mean, I, I like that. And that also touches base uh, on something you said earlier, that. There's a list there. Here's what you failed on. Here's your problems. You can go back and expect that if I fix these things, correct, I'm going to pass. Yeah, and I'll get another. Well, okay, you need to do this too, and you need to do this. And, yeah. Um. If, yeah, forward that to. I'll forward it to you. Yeah. Um. So. But e even the city. Um, we pay two thousand dollars for for a building permit on a on a twenty four hundred square foot house. Now, how that money is used, I don't know. But you asked the question. I got a feeling they're providing this service because they're yeah. charging a little bit more for the uh, for the for them to do that. Yeah. And the city also they've got some third party groups. Correct. Helping. And I think they're actually considering going to this company. There is a significant cost involved. Correct. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, um, I certainly appreciate all your input. Anybody else? I appreciate it. Mm, I'm good. Thanks, Larry. Well, thank you. All right. So uh, if we're ready to move to the next. So I can leave. Yes, thank yeah. you. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Well, thank you. Well, I'm sorry. Uh, you guys have to do. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Um, I'd Chief. like to personally thank you, uh, Mr. Chu, for coming in and uh, in part and just giving us the information to allow us to uh, end up our game. Uh, we are in a position we feel now that we are competing, we are open for business, and we're just not talking, we're walking. Um, I appreciate all the dialogue you provided today, and I'm, all we can do is uh, just, I say, come better at what we're doing. Certainly, we have rolled up the red tape and we rolled out the red carpet. And, and that's important. So all the things that you shared with me today, particularly as, as uh, Commissioner Robinson chaired this committee, I know that uh, we have a promising and bright future here. It seems like a couple of things that you uh, noted that we need to uh, improve upon. We did take some copious notes. I noticed that this morning. So we will make sure that we uh, put a lot of these the things that you provided me to play. And we will turn talk into action today. And so I, I appreciate, appreciate the opportunity because um, I, I learned years ago, whatever you do, the more buy-in you have, the more people that are on the table. Um, at, 
the end of the day, your your likelihood of success is a lot greater. And and, and it's the old island concept. I think years ago, everybody worked on their own. You know, I don't really care what they're doing. This is how we're doing it, uh, regardless if it caused issues. And uh, that barrier, I think, is being eliminated or is gone today. So, all right. Well, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. For the checks in the mail. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So. <laughs> thank you very much. That's from the WSA. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Take care. Okay. So uh, moving on. Mm -hmm. Um, next item I had was just touching on the future meeting dates. I've, we set those, we discussed a little bit in the last meeting to go to quarterly. Mm -hmm. um, the meetings were set for March 17th, June 16th, September 15th, and December 15th. Um, I've sent out the invitations to those and I think almost everybody or the majority of folks have accepted those so I was just going to note that. Um, Next item, future, oh, let me circle back. I didn't specifically say it, but same time, 9.30, same room. Mm -hmm. It's That's all been cleared and covered, so I just wanted to put that on the record. But, um, future meeting and topics, future meeting topics and speakers. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, Metro Study, I had a conversation with them. Um, I had originally thought we wouldn't really need to use them directly because of some of the realtors and things are using information off of their studies. Mm -hmm. um, but after having a conversation with him, his insight's a little different than, than I think the low, you know, some of the, his specialty is kind of predicting the future, if you will, of, of markets and trends. And I think it would be beneficial to hear. So I told him I would probably be reaching back out to him to get him in sometime next year. I don't know if we want to schedule anything for the next committee meeting. This is kind of based talking about him. All right, so I next, when was the next meeting? Um, March 17th. Correct. Correct. Yeah, that'd be a good time to have him come out to tell us. You know, that means you had year in, we had a couple months in. What do you think? Mm -hmm. Only concern or thought I had. Um, oh, just draw off with you. Well, no, I was just going to say, I don't know if. Well, we have comments ready by then. Yes. Think, for UBC updates. So we'll yes. Use and uh, that's, that's why I was catching Leslie in the hall. To, he, he's already gotten the stakeholder questions that were sent out Monday. We will have comments back um, the end of uh, the month, uh, January. So we should have some 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 feedback on the stakeholder survey questions to bring forward in March for the for, this is for the U, UDC update. Yeah. We did that to that point. We were talking earlier about uh, as a new UDC update, how will you approach the board of commissions to ensure that they get they get input? Right? What, what is the process? And um, the, 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 the committee, without you having to go back and look at the tape, acknowledge that do you go to PMZ? Do you go to the, this committee? Do you go? It was a combination of different things. But I was trying to encourage, well, make sure that. Um, the board has some kind of way of participating before it gets to a final vote. Um, most of our UDCs are, again, this is only long, right? That uh, really wants to be listed as something that really hasn't been updated. So what is that process? So my point is, that's as important, and I don't know when it's going to be done, but it's also important for us to get insight into the community and what's happening so we make decisions we need. So we, I want to say it's both. So at that first meeting, is there any way we make it longer or whatever you need to do? But I, I don't want to go a whole quarter without, you know, that's the whole point of this committee. So it's not to be, again, we're just now introducing this, you know, introducing this legislative process into something that this committee was supposed to get insight. So I don't want to compromise getting insight for, you see what I'm saying? So how do y'all want to balance this? How do we do, do both? Do you think you'll have some recommendations by then? Yeah, we will. We'll have some 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 uh, recommendations to bring forward for, for March 17th. Mm -hmm. now, we would like that would actually be the better way to do it. To be honest with you, Mark and commissioners, um, it'd be to, to get some of the lower hanging fruit, vet it to the PNZ, take that with questionnaires, bond look together, bring it to this group, and and or or a joint PNZ or bring it to this group and then a, a PNZ slash uh, uh, meeting with. Uh, Board commissioners like a little workshop. Oh, workshop. That was that, that. That was a very good suggestion. I think that would work out very well. 
so then would everyone, anybody be opposed to doing the March 17th meeting on UDC updates and then the, the following June meeting having the Metro study focus come out? That's, that's, that's me, guys. We're in, this is important for my budget. I give it to you. Your process versus I need my information. I need what's going on in the marketplace. Right? Kicking me out to do it if it does not work. Okay. Right. So we, we need, you know what I'm saying? I, I get your process, the legislation, and I get it. But we have decisions we gotta make real time. And I, if the early predictors I can get and get them in here mm -hmm. is important. So I'm saying it's not either or. I'm embracing both. So y'all y'all figure that out. They can coexist. Yeah, they can mm -hmm. coexist. We, we need both of these. We we need that information. So um, again, this is something that we, prior to y'all just bringing this up, we were expecting we were gonna have experts come in and give us insight. Now I understand the urgency of this one-off process mm -hmm. you have can't circumvent me, but it's this more formalized, custom, uniform, consistent process that we're putting in place. So, Mark, what do you think? Wait a minute. Good. I mean, we could even split the March uh, meeting up into two meetings if we think it's going to be longer. I mean, we're not nailed, nailed down to, you know, quarterly meetings. We can have two this first quarter. I mean, that's because you won't give it a shot with not knowing what he's going to do. And he's talking about a, a, a UDC, regardless of if it's not the entire right, it's still big enough that we need to be thoughtful. Sure. And we'd be rushing through those, like, those, those, the board meetings, like, okay, come on, guys. And we'd be checking out, like, okay, we're just going, we're at the end, we're just texting, like, okay. And we're really not giving it the thought that it should be given. Right? Because it's, it, they're so long, they're so combined and stuff. Like, okay, so you've gone through this process, you spent the money. Let's make sure we have adequate time to hear what you have to say to give feedback, or else it's just going to be the same exercise and we're trying to cram all this stuff into a single meeting. And I still think the best way, in my opinion, the best way to go with this UDC update for the workshop, a joint meeting with the BOC and mm -hmm. P and Z. That way everybody's in the same room, you know, free discussion, and, you know, and we've done those in the past on mm -hmm. other issues. Mm -hmm. So, no committee, you better. That's I'm okay. okay. If y'all are so, okay with that, I think that's the best way to do it. So then we can do um, Metro study on March 17th, yep. and then we'll just schedule our workshop for all of you to see. Everybody get it right. Mm -hmm. okay. right. That's fine. That's fine. All right. So we'll do it. We definitely want our peers to do Okay. Anything else? No, this is good. I, that was a good one, though. I appreciate uh, Mr. Chu being here. Very, very excited. So, yeah. okay. um, I'm sure. I would just like to apologize for my lateness, but however, I'm looking at uh, tab number four, and I'm quite sure if someone could just give me just this Reader's Digest version. Is, is it looking good? Or what, what yes, ma'am. Reader's like? Digest is we're done in all of the uh, subdivisions except for the one we're waiting on uh, <coughs> information that it's going to move forward as planned. And we've been in communication with the, the owner and engineer of that development. They they know what we expect before we'll move forward on that project. And that's both points. Yeah, both. Mm -hmm. Can we hear it inside of the timetable when we think these will hit? Yeah. My understanding is they're still working on obtaining sewer easements, and I don't know how how much longer that's going to be while. And do we anticipate that these, these 300 odd, 300 to 400 odd, uh, will be realized in 2020? I think a, a good portion of them will be. Uh, we've already issued permits on Beulah Ridge. Beulah Ridge got all of his. Mm -hmm. And um, Palmer Falls, probably. Yeah. Um, uh, Legacy Park, the 40 lots in there. And then See. I know the seven lots in Winchester Farms are, they're, they're chopping at the bit. Um, we're actually about to execute an agreement with Carroll County to provide water service. That's the subdivision that's half in Douglas, half in Carroll. Mm -hmm. um, I think all that's that's remaining for them is to uh, for us to execute that agreement with Carroll, and then they'll need to provide Carroll County whatever whatever their requirements are for the water service. Okay. okay. So this also my understanding. We have some building that's going on in the St. Andrews area that y'all just mm -hmm. update us. Uh, they, they can. I was, I was <laughs> affirming, yeah, they're, okay. they're building out there as well as um, other subdivisions. I don't have a specific update. I, I mean, I know there's there's a there's a number of different phases around there, and they're all 
East Village, you know, West, West Village. West I know West there's a, the West Village is 30 lots, the East Village maybe another 30 to 40, and, and they are, they're doing them in small groups. They haven't pulled all of the um, permits as one, uh, but yes, there is some, some action out there. It's a plot, so. Anybody else? Mr. <coughs> no, no comments. Thanks for having us today. Anybody? <coughs> All good. All right. All right. Well, it did. Can you show you ready? Yes, sir. All right. If there's nothing else, please come before this committee. Let this meeting stand adjourned. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.